Hello everyone, welcome back to Eclectic Alu. Today I wanted to make a short video, I hope it's short, about three things. What is dissociation, what are triggers, and what it means to be in a flashback. So let's start by explaining what a flashback is. A flashback is a state where you feel as if you're reliving a traumatic event. So you are reliving what was traumatic to you. Hmm? Sometimes these flashbacks are pretty clear and you know you're in a flashback because you, you, you are reminded of, oh my God, this takes you back to whatever it is. And suddenly you realize you're inside a flashback, really. It means you're reliving at a physiological level, not only psychological, or mental level it's it's physiological so you feel it in your body you feel it as if it's happening right now so that's a flashback you know so what takes you there triggers triggers take you to that dark place where you were living abusive events okay so the triggers will take you back to the past triggers are paired associations are based on this principle, psychological principle of pairing two things and making them to have one meaning, okay? So very much like Pavlov's dogs, um, where they were shown with, uh, you know, food and then a bell and then they will salivate, okay? And this is similar in the sense that, for example, a perfume can remind you of a certain person in a good way or in a bad way. Triggers are used usually for remembering the bad stuff, whatever is traumatic to you. Triggers are anything that reminds us from previous trauma or danger. They can be things, smells, uh, people, gestures, tone of voices, um, yeah, perfumes, like that, smells, uh, situations. It's very much felt at a physiological level a trigger and for example let's say uh, an accent that can trigger you or a perfume that can trigger you or some certain smirk in the face that can trigger you too for clothing you know clothes that you were wearing when the trauma happened uh, anything that takes you back to the traumatic event let's say I had a traumatic event and I used to wear a certain perfume during that time so now I cannot bear the smell of that perfume okay and that why because it makes me sick to my stomach because it reminds me of this traumatic event okay that's an example so there are ways to work with triggers and one of them is realizing that you have a trigger first thing second thing is making a list of triggers then noticing that rationally the paired association that your brain made to protect you from future danger um, is not rational because a perfume is not dangerous, okay? So uh, you will need to be aware of that. Be curious about your triggers and that alone will help you realize that, okay, this is a thing, so I have triggers and then they take me back to the traumatic time and then I'm in a flashback and then I start sweating and then my stomach turns and then, you know, and then I'm afraid maybe and I'm, I'm in danger suddenly. But then if you know that you have triggers that take you back to that time where you were, for example, being abused by somebody, then you will start to see, okay, so to follow with this example, the perfume, which is my trigger, let's say, is not dangerous in itself right it's just a perfume so it doesn't do anything to me the thing is the period association that I do to that thing the perfume so if you want to for example reduce triggers you may want to explore you know see okay so this is the perfume let's see what happens if I smell the scent okay I feel awful but now I know I'm aware due to our neuroplasticity the brain is very malleable and we can 
reconnect, rewire our brain so that we can have new experiences with that perfume and see that the perfume is not uh, dangerous, for example. Try not to avoid your triggers so much, you know, sometimes you can, sometimes it's too difficult and please take it this very slowly, like progressively. But the idea behind this is that once you engage in being curious about your triggers, you will start to see that, okay, I have triggers and then your brain will start to be curious and will start to disengage from paired associations that you've made in the past. Okay, naturally, it will rewire itself, but it takes time and it takes some work in that you have to be, you know, cognizant of what's going on and know that, okay, I have triggers that take me way back and then take me to a flashback. One more thing about flashbacks that I want to say, sometimes you know you are in a flashback and sometimes you don't know you're in a flashback. Sometimes this means that for CPTSD, which is complex post-traumatic stress disorder, you sometimes feel sad for no reason. Suddenly, it's as if a cloud invaded your space, and so, or maybe you are anxious out of nowhere, and you don't know what it is, and or maybe you're angry and reactive, and so, um, and you are in a flashback, but right there because. Let's say, uh, for example, you are reacting to um, your flashback is not necessarily a thing, but a concept, a thing that happens, I mean, a dynamic that happens while you interact with individuals. For example, you get extremely angry when you sense someone is being unfair and you react like there's no tomorrow, you get angry and start yelling out of nowhere, that's a flashback. You went from that trigger to a flashback when it took you way back. You're reacting right now in the present moment as if you were in the past. And then you, you don't understand why you overreacted and why you start yelling, which is, you don't usually do that. But suddenly you started Wah! reacting like that. And that's because, for example, you are, your trigger wasn't uh, injustice and then you reacted as if you were flashback in the past, reliving that. So this is why it's very important to be aware of your flashbacks, of your triggers. And one more thing, one more concept that I want to talk to you about today, that is dissociation. So dissociation is a mental process that you go through when um, it's basically your nervous system trying to avoid your pain, anxiety, depression, anger. And so it's a response to an overwhelming trigger or something that is going on that makes you go into a flashback and start reliving painful memories. So you start dissociating highway, daydreaming, um, sleeping a lot, um, watching a lot of TV, uh, or videos or you know doing uh, things that space you out feeling numbness nothing you know when they say I don't feel anything you may be dissociating spacing out everything that takes you out of whatever is going on right now which is feelings okay and the thing is CBTSD you have to feel in order to heal so we need to dissociate less and less, okay? I don't want you to do, okay, stop dissociating. We all do that and we need that for surviving here on planet Earth, especially right now with the pandemic and all. <laughs> but uh, you, the idea is to decrease that, okay? And focus on what you're feeling. This is why what we, we need to do in order to overcome all this, to reduce flashbacks, reduce your triggers, make them disappear, even associate less grounding techniques, being in the present moment, going into nature, anything that connects you with you and with your feelings and emotions and awareness of your emotions is very key and then anything that keeps you here and like 
navigating emotions because they are painful, they are not fun sometimes, but each emotion has a purpose and it's good to feel them so that you can feel better afterwards, okay? So it's you need to go through your emotions in order to to overcome all these things. And that is not fun, okay? So this is why it's done progressively. But in order to to feel better, you will have to feel the emotions and our culture usually um, tends to use dissociation a lot and it's like in the culture, for example, uh, drinking alcohol a lot, that's the way, dissociating drugs and things that uh, take you away from here and now and from feeling what you have to feel in order to keep, you know, moving forward in your recovery, okay? And so when there's an addiction, I always think there's trauma too. Yeah, it's important to um, feel whatever it is that you feel. So grounding, breathing, breathing, grounding, anything that keeps you here. Yoga, uh, Tai Chi, playing an instrument, um, singing, um, being here right now is the key to overcome all this. And also working on the triggers like I told you. So yeah, in order to feel better, you have to be here now. And you know, reduce dissociation and all that. Please subscribe, like the video if you did like it, found it interesting. I hope this was helpful. And I will see you soon, okay? See you next week, bye-bye.